When looking at German military vehicles, it's intriguing to consider that many of their vehicles struck fear into the hearts of the Allies, and with subsequent propaganda rumours, tanks such as the Tiger I would have a notorious reputation and legacy. The Tiger would be one of the most terrifying vehicles for the Allies to encounter, however there was one incredible vehicle that borrowed its name from the Tiger, however fired an incredible 380mm mortar rather than shells. The Sturmtiger, as it's known, was a heavy tank project that drew a significant amount of curiosity from the Allies, and it was an incredible vehicle developed specifically for urban combat. It could deliver a huge explosive shell at close quarters, and even be used for long-range shelling of an enemy position. Today we're going to look at the Sturmtiger, the mortar-firing German tank of the Second World War. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. From the experiences of fighting in heavy urban environments such as during the Battle of Stalingrad in 1942, it became apparent that there was a need for a heavy infantry support vehicle that was capable of demolishing buildings that were heavily fortified or well defended. A tank or vehicle that could shell a building and bring it down with a single shot was needed for the German army to quickly take their positions. At this time, the Wehrmacht only had a variant of the Stug III armed with a 150mm gun to do this job, and 12 of these were lost at Stalingrad. From early 1943, the Brumbar or Sturmpanzer IV was developed, but also being developed at this time was better anti-tank weapons. The Wehrmacht, even though they had the Brumbar, still saw a need for a similar but more heavily armed and armoured vehicle or tank. A decision would then be taken to create a new vehicle, using the infamous Tiger tank as inspiration. However, originally it was to be armed with a 210mm howitzer armament, but this weapon really wasn't available at the time, and it was to be replaced by a colossal and huge 380mm rocket launcher. By September 1943, there were plans being drawn up by industrial conglomerate Krupp to create new Tiger I hulls for the proposed Sturmtiger. These hulls would be sent to Henschel for the chassis assembly, and then to Alcott, where the superstructures could be mounted onto the chassis. Now it's clear that these three manufacturers would need to be working together in order to create the new huge weapon, and the first prototype would be shown to Hitler in October 1943. Three Sturmtiggers would be completed by the 20th of February 1944, ready for the final part of the Second World War. Twelve superstructures and weapons would be mounted and placed onto the adapted Tiger I chassis, and overall there would only be 18 Sturmtigers ever created. It's not easy to work out the overall cost of a Sturmtiger, however Tiger I's cost around 250,000 Reichsmarks to build, and the cost of adapting a Sturmtiger was about 53,000 Reichsmarks on top, which was an overall cost of around 300,000 Reichsmarks. This is a huge amount of money, considering it would cost only around 117,000 Reichsmarks to create a Panther. In terms of running gear for the Sturmtiger, it was identical to the Tiger I, but the production Sturmtigers were supposed to be fitted with rubber tyred road wheels to help manage the extra 8 tons of weight on board the vehicle over the Tiger I. However, all of the vehicles are seen with the same steel rimmed wheels found on the later Tigers. The vehicle would weigh in a colossal 68 tons overall, and it was much slower and less manoeuvrable than the Tiger I. The designers kept the same engine, a Maybach HL 230, and this wasn't good enough to power the vehicle. Its maximum speed would be around 25 miles per hour, and the range was a poor 75 miles. The Sturmtig was also much shorter than the Tiger tank, due to the fact it didn't possess a large gun which protruded over the hull. It was only 6.28 metres long, compared to 8.45 metres on board the Tiger I. It was also slightly lower. As the Sturmtig was intended to be used in urban areas and in street fighting, it needed to be heavily armoured to withstand huge amounts of pressure and offence. It had sloped armour at 47 degrees that was 150mm thick at the front of the superstructure, which aimed to deflect shots off easier. The front of the hull was 100mm, and could even be up armoured to 150mm if an additional plate was fitted. Around the side of the superstructure, the thickness was 82mm, and the lower hull side, rear and front, was 62mm thick. All of this armour made the Sturmtiger a rather formidable opponent that could withstand a large amount of punishment. Now the armament on board and the weapon is what made the Sturmtiger extremely unique. Originally the core was for a 210mm howitzer to be fitted, but it was fitted with a 380mm Rakuten Werfer 61 L5.4. It fired a short range rocket propelled projectile that was around 1.5 meters long. The shells were absolutely huge, and only 12 rounds could be carried internally. 
No specialist resupply vehicle would accompany the Sturmtiger, but additional shells could be carried in trucks by the unit deploying the vehicle, which would allow the Sturmtiger to be reloaded, having been withdrawn from combat. Reloading the shells was carried out by means of a temporary crane which was placed onto the back of the cab, which lowered the shells through a hatch in the roof and down onto the stowage racks. The RW-61 mortar, as it was known, was specifically for targeting reinforced concrete. Its range was dependent on temperature, and it could fire a maximum range of 4200 meters at minus 40 degrees, and 6600 meters at 15 degrees. This was due to the difference in shell performance as the propellant was greatly affected by colder temperatures. The warhead could even go through around 2.5 meters of solid reinforced concrete. There would be a five-man crew who would operate the Sturmtiger, a driver, machine gunner who doubled up as a radio operator, a loader, a second loader, and a commander or a gunner. A 100mm grenade launch could also be fitted to the vehicle as a second armament, as could an MG-34 machine gun. In terms of combat history, the Sturmtiger was intended to fit a role as a heavy infantry support vehicle to assist with attacking heavily fortified or built up towns and areas. The issue however is by the time the Sturmtiger was made, the Wehrmacht was pretty much on the defensive rather than the offensive, and Germany was losing territory and ground quickly. 16 of the 18 Sturmtigers were issued to new Panzer companies, Panzer Sturm Mercer companies 1000, 1001 and 1002 for the defence of the German homeland in 1944. The Sturm Mercer company 1000 would fight during the Warsaw Uprising with two vehicles and this may have been the only time that the Sturmtiger was used correctly in an assault role in a heavy urban area. After this, there were also plans to send the vehicles to Bratislava to help quash the rebellion that was uprising in September 1944. A couple of Sturmtigers were sent to France by the end of 1944, and companies 1000 and 1001 would serve with their vehicles in the Ardennes Offensive with a total of seven Sturmtigers. Following this offensive, the Sturmtigers were then used mainly on the Western Front in the defence of Germany. During the battle for a bridge at Remagen, German forces mobilised Sturmmercer Company 1000 and 1001 with their seven Sturmtigers to take part in the battle. The tank was originally intended to use their weapons against the bridge, however they lacked accuracy in doing this. During one of these firings, a Sturmtiger hit a stationary group of Sherman tanks in a village with a 380mm round, resulting in nearly all the Shermans being put out of action and their crews killed or wounded. This is one of the only real records of tank-on-tank -tank combat that Sturmtiger was ever involved in. Following the bridge falling to the Allies, the two companies of Sturmtigers were tasked with bombarding Allied forces to cover the German retreat. There was a Sturmtiger that was immobilised when the vehicle was stuck in a ditch in February 1945 at Durin, and it was immobilised by a number of shots in the rear by a Sherman. The crew with their 18mm thick rear armour penetrated, and the vehicle stuck, bailed out, but all had survived from the strikes from the American tank. So overall the Sturmtig was a very unique vehicle. A tank firing a mortar intended for urban warfare is rather interesting, however it came at completely the wrong time in the war for the Germans. If the Sturmtig had been used during the early invasions at the start of the conflict, it could have rained down terror on cities in soon to be occupied German territory. At this time however, the Sturmtig wasn't what the Germans needed, they would have been better using vehicles such as the Stug 3 or 4 in their roles as tank destroyers in a defensive fashion. Urban fighting when the Sturmtiger came out was for the Germans only defensive, and the Sturmtiger had very little use in this way. It's an incredibly interesting vehicle, however one must consider that it was hugely expensive too, and probably wasn't worth the huge amount of resources that were thrown into its development. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching.